Hi guys, so today we will be doing a very interesting chapter that is principles of inheritance and variation. Okay, so this is a very good chapter. Start with basically we will do NCRT. So see, have you ever wondered why an elephant always gives birth only to an elephant baby and not some other animal? Okay. This is very like you may say it's a very common sense question. Okay, that obviously because why this happens? Because there is something that is passed on from parent to the offspring. Right. Now what that thing is we know. Today we know that this is gene. Okay, but at the time of Mendel, he didn't knew this thing. Okay, who is Mendel? Mendel is the father of genetics. Okay, so now today we know that why this thing happens, but we didn't know this thing many, many years back. Okay, so why this happened? Because of inheritance, because something is being inherited from the parents to the offsprings. Or why a mango seed forms only mango plant and not any other plant? Because the seeds, seed kaise bata hai? Seed has basically the embryo, right? Embryo is made from the zygote. And the zygote is formed by the fusion of male, sorry, this is female, female and male gametes. Okay, so there is something in this gametes, in the gametes of the parents that is transferred to the baby. Okay, these are the genes. Today we know it. Given that they do, are the offspring identical to their parents? Right. So are they identical? Yes. Right. Like if you see a human and you see his or her babies okay so human baby would look like a human baby only right so not exactly identical identical is basically similar right so they are not exactly same but yes identical you can make out that this is a human baby and this is a dog baby okay so you can easily make out by external features that who is the parent? So yes, you can make out that offspring uh, has which parent, right? Or do they show some differences in some of their characteristics? Yes, absolutely, right? Like you, this is you, okay, and this is your mother. This is your mother and this is your father. Right. So, you look similar to them, but you don't look exactly the same. Right. So, have you wondered why, sorry, or do they show some differences? Yes. Right. Like, you don't look exactly the same as compared to your of your parents or your grandparents because like we are humans so we are sexually reproducing organisms okay and in sexually reproducing organism the gametes when they fuse right when the whole, uh, you must have studied in cell cycle and cell division in the meiosis right see Gametes are haploid and normal human, all the cells of human are uh, deployed. So, gametes has to be formed by meiosis. Okay. So, when meiosis happens, in meiosis too, there is crossing over process. Right. This is the crossing over process. 
and there is exchange of segments recombination is there crossing over is there so all these things basically lead to the formation of new combinations which ultimately makes you what you are right so it is, you are a recombinant right like some characters are from parents and some are totally different because they are formed by the recombination have you ever wondered why siblings sometimes look so similar to each other it is because they have common parents or sometimes even so different it is because recombination ठीक है these and several related questions are dealt with scientifically in a branch of biology known as genetics and please uh, remember that genetics is a very new term from many many years we only knew that something is passed on from parents to the offspring but what exactly is that thing we did it knew it we did it know it okay so this is genetics basically deals with all these questions that we discussed above <coughs> these and okay so this is genetics this subject deals with the inheritance inheritance is passing or passing off of the character from the parent to the offspring as well as the variation from parents to offspring iska reason kya hai meiosis theek hai meiosis mein recombination crossing over basically theek hai so this is the reason for the variation inheritance is the process by which characters are passed on from parent to progeny progeny is basically the baby or the offspring it is the basis of heredity variation is a degree by which progeny differ from their parents like you are not exactly the same as your mother or father the the degree or the amount by which you differ that thing is basically variation okay Humans knew from as early as eight thousand to one thousand BC that one of the causes of variation was hidden in sexual reproduction. Right? So see, variation, sexual reproduction. Right? We know it. Okay, because gamete formation happens mainly in the sexually reproducing organism. In case of a uh, asexual reproduction we say that the offspring is a clone right why a clone because it is exactly similar to the parent both morphologically and genetically means phenotypically also or genotypically also right so because it's sexual reproduction only the homologous chromosome homologous is basically chromosome with same size same you know uh, like all the characters are same theek okay. hai means at this point if height gene is present in mother so it would be height gene here only so some Uh, recombination will happen leading to a new combination right they exploited the variation that were naturally present in the wild population of plants and animals to selectively breed and select for organism that possess desirable characters theek hai ab dekho now the new that there is something called a gamete it comes from both the parents and when it fuses when the gametes fuses to form a zygote 
Zygote has characteristics of both the parents, right? So, like we humans are very, what should I say, clever, right? We use everything. We, you know, find benefit in everything. So, what we thought that why don't we create plants with the with the desired qualities, like what we want in a farm. like disease resistance and uh, if it is the case of a cow okay so you have to produce a good cow now cow good isn't what what terms like the uh, more milk collection or if it is a bull we want to inculcate in the property of strength right so it is like this So they exploited the variation that was naturally present in the wild population to selectively breed and select for organisms that possess desirable characters, right? So means you select the parents and you make their gametes pure to make a zygote with. Like for example, if this is a cow, and it has more milk per lactation, so the calf that would be formed would have more would uh, be able to produce more milk per lactation. So you can selectively breed. You can decide the parents, and how will you decide the parents? You will try to add more of the good qualities. See, for example, through artificial selection and domestication from ancestral wild cows, we have well-known Indian breeds. Example: Sahiwal cows in Punjab. Okay, so this you remember the Sahiwal cows. Where uh, are they formed? Like not formed exactly, but they uh, like, yeah. are. uh we have domesticated them we have uh, made the desired genes combined and like well known indian breed the sahiwal cows in punjab so we bred cows and we obtained after fusion we after hybridization basically we call it hybridization when you selectively breed the plants so we formed Like hybridization is when you selectively breed either plant or animal. So one of the example is Sahiwal cows in Punjab, in which you included your uh, desired properties. We must, however, recognize that though our ancestor knew about the inheritance of character and variation. Okay, so we say that eight thousand. To one thousand BC, they knew that okay, sexual reproduction implies variation, or in variations, who we can use for our own fiber. Okay, but they didn't knew the science behind it. Okay, which you know something happening outside, but you don't know that how it is happening. So that how kind of question they didn't know. Okay, so scientists came in this field and tried to explore that what exactly this thing is. What is the science behind it? Okay, so Mendel's law of inheritance, right? So basically, Mendel who was Mendel was the first one who ever talked about genetics, right? But if you will see, like genetics is something which has bit of you know maths also, right? So the idea that you can combine biology with mathematics was an absurd idea. Absurd means illogical idea. Like how can you combine the two entirely different subjects, right? But if you see today, now we know that everything is connected, right? Like uh, we created biology, chemistry, and physics for our own convenience, but ex- 
actually it was just one science right like for example in biology you uh, study the movement right the movement of your limbs but if actually you will uh, understand the mechanism it's more of physics right like center of gravity how you are standing the way you are standing so all science is connected but at that time it is around 1857 to 1863 so it is very uh, you know bahut pehle ki baat hai ye theek hai so at that time when mendel tried to give the explanation of why what are genes he didn't actually use the term genes but in a way tried to explain it to a very good extent right but he didn't get that much you know recognition so we can say that he was a very unfortunate scientist because he didn't get any recognition at all okay till he was alive after uh, you know after his death some scientists came and rediscovered mendelism okay so they rediscovered mendelism and basically then they realized oh he was a great man right so like that Gregor Mendel conducted hybridization experiment on garden peas for 7 years okay so basically he became monk and stayed in a monastery and there in the garden he started planting garden peas right and right he started planting the garden peas for 7 years and basically studied various characters okay so these were the years that this is important 1856 to 1863 he did his experiments and proposed the laws of inheritance in living organisms so he did it on uh, you know the plant pea plant but mendel's law are universal mendel's laws are universal okay and proposed the laws of inheritance in living organisms okay during mendel's investigation into inheritance pattern it was for the first time the statistical analysis the logics were applied to problems in biology okay so you see that whenever you try to do something different right so you always you know get the opposition a strong opposition okay people uh, try to pull you down okay they don't really try to understand what you are saying but they judge you on the basis of uh, you know what they expect you to say okay so none of the scientists at the time was expecting mathematics in biology right so it was for the first time to be statistical like a statistical means uh, the graphs and the stats that this means data you are collecting the data in mathematics uh, in biology in genetics and mathematical logics right his experiments had a large sampling size okay so large sampling size hone ki wajah se what happened that whenever you have a large uh, you know sampling size you get better results okay your results are authentic they are uh, credible right if you do it on one plant and you find a certain ratio and you think let like, okay this is the ratio and on the other hand you are doing it multiple times to see if the same thing is happening in any in every plant 
okay because you are trying to give an explanation which is universal okay so it should apply to everything so you try to maximize your sample size so that it gives greater credibility means greater you know proof or uh, people will trust you more to the data he collected also the confirmation of his inferences from experiments from successive generations of his test plants proved that his result pointed to general rules rather than being on substantiated ideas so basically he gave like uh, something that is being followed in every generation theek hai so this means that this thing is true right so basically he showed in graphs and the statics that this much plants i am get, getting of this type so there was a pattern he was observing so he was not like hawa mein baatein kar raha hai it was full proof right because uh, by the statistics he wrote everything right and the ratios were coming similar so that means that they were not just unsubstantiated ideas they were general rules of inheritance okay which it applies to all made of investigated characters in a garden p theek hai that were manifested as two opposing traits example tall or dwarf plant yellow or green seeds okay so basically he took 14 variety of the garden pea theek hai so 14 varieties of garden pea mein what he observed is he uh, he took such character which have two distinguishing uh, you know uh, sorry he took such trait which had easily visible character for example you can easily see whether a plant is tall or dwarf right you can easily see in a pea that the pod pod is basically the fully the outer uh, the fruit in which there are seeds so that is green or yellow so the characters he chose was very very easily you know uh, you can see externally also okay so this allowed him to set up a basic framework of rules governing inheritance okay but at his time no none of the scientists paid attention to it but it was later expanded by later scientists okay means later there was a time when uh, some of the scientists like von che mark and um, corens right so some of these scientists rediscovered mendelism So we have done till here. Okay, you revise it once and do write in the comment section if you have any doubt. Okay, in the next uh, session, which will be coming really very soon, we will start from here. Right. Keep learning, guys. Thanks a lot.